Right. Well, welcome everyone to today's uh, Quaffy webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Tim O'Hare and I'm a Principal Research Fellow from the Centre of Nutrition and Food Sciences, which is one of the four centres of Quaffy. Um, today I, I'd like to introduce uh, a purbo, but first, before we do that, I think I, I have a compulsory acknowledgement of country. Uh, so UQ acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet. We pay our respects to the ancestors and the descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australia and global society. Next slide. So just some uh, housekeeping first. Uh, so today's seminar is, is scheduled to go from 12 until 1 uh, p.m. And uh, after the presentation, we will hold a question and answer session. So I ask you that uh, during the seminar, if you can put your questions, if you can type them into the Q&A button down the bottom of your Zoom and don't use the chat button because the chat button is just for tech, uh, technological issues. So just to repeat, put your questions in the Q&A section and we will get to them uh, hopefully at the end of this session. So I'd like to introduce uh, a Perbo. Uh, Perbo Lel Ray uh, is from uh, University of uh, uh, Jagannath uh, in Dhaka, Bangladesh originally as an assistant professor and came over and joined us as a PhD uh, candidate in 2018. And uh, Perbo has a background in uh, molecular biology and uh, the topic that uh, he chose to work with with us was developing purple sweet corn. So, uh, which he'll be talking about today. So, uh, without further ado, I think uh, we we might uh, start into the into the um, your your webinar, uh, Perbo. So, over to you. I acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today and pay my respect to their ancestors and their descendants. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my presentation on uh, high anthocyanin rich purple sweet corn development, uh, a noble product you may not have heard before. To start with, uh, I have uh, some topics to be discussed. First of all, uh, I would uh, like to uh, talk uh, some introductory uh, things uh, on purple sweet corn and other stuffs and some genetics and anatomy uh, related to sweet corn and maize. So the purple sweet corn uh, and yellow sweet corn had some differences. So I will also highlight on them as well. I'll also uh, talk about uh, some health benefits of sweet corn and anthocyanin. And uh, the interesting thing is to why sweet corn, purple sweet corn is not common. So uh, followed by anthocyanin and starch biosynthesis pathways, I will uh, talk on them. And then what's the challenges uh, on developing purple sweet corn? I will talk on those steps. Uh, then there will be my uh, hypothesis uh, and aims uh, for my research work, followed by field work, molecular work, and biochemical work. First of all, uh, corn, which is known as maize as well, uh, its scientific name is diamage, subspecies maize. It's a diploid organism having 20 chromosomes. 
the whole genome of corn is also sequenced, uh, which is 2.4 gigabase pair of DNA. Now, the modern corn is originated uh, about 9,000 years ago uh, from an annual grass, which is known as Theosinte, GMH subspecies, Parmi blumis. You can see the Theosinte plant has uh, more branches, but the corn plant has uh, very limited and after domestication and uh, diversification of some genes, uh, the corn plant is originated. So sweet corn is uh, uh, grown all over the world, but the leaders of sweet corn uh, productions are USA, China, Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, India, and Australia. So purple maize, it's uh, traditionally grown in Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador. Uh, this purple color is uh, distinctive because of anthocyanin, which is plant secondary metabolites. So you can easily I can see this visual, uh, this uh, nice purple color. The sweet corn industry is basically based on shank into sweet corn. Shank into is a gene. So this is uh, discovered uh, 106 years ago, 1914. So not actually far away. So this industry is based on this Shankin to gene sweet corn. Now, uh, this is the purple starchy maize. The genetics behind this is that there is a dominant A1 gene, anthocyanin gene, which produces the purple color. So it's purple. There's also a dominant access to gene, Shankin to gene. So uh, this gene actually acts uh, for converting sugar to starch. As a result, uh, the purple corn is uh, not sweet. In contrast, uh, the sweet corn, uh, there is a recessive genes of A1. So there is a purple color. It's a yellow or white in color. And there is also a Shangin 2 gene. So this is the Shangin 2 gene mutation. As a result, the sugar can't actually convert it to starch. So the kernels on the cob actually sh become shrunken in mature stage. But at eating stage, it's a round and sugar is inside, so you can eat them easily. This is the corn kernel. So there are three or 400 kernels on one cob. So the outer layer is known as uh, pericard. Uh, this is a uh, four layer cells. And the inner layer is alurone, which is a single layer cell. So uh, this uh, alone layer is not actually uh, thick than the pericap layer. That's why pericap pigmented corn is much important than alone pigmented corn. And inside uh, alone, there is starchy endosperm and embryo. Now, what's the differences between purple seed corn and yellow seed corn? Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, the differences are mainly the purple pigment, which is uh, developed by uh, the anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway. So the pigment is anthocyanin. There is also um, anthocyanin deposition in the outer layer, known as pericarp. So in the alluron layer, there may be purple color or not, but the pericarp layer, it has the purple color. That's why we see the purple color. And it has different health benefits, including uh, uh, helping your cardiovascular health by reducing high blood pressure. On the other hand, uh, in yellow seed sweet corn, the main pigment is calcinate, uh, mainly lutein and geogenin. So this uh, yellow pigment is uh, actually uh, accumulated in the inner tissue, in the endosperm, but as the outer pericarp uh, is transparent, so light can easily pass through it and you can see the yellow color. This calcinate pigment also has some health benefits, uh, including uh, your eye health, especially reducing age-related macular eye degeneration. So it's also good for your health as well. Now more, uh, some more uh, health benefits of sweet corn and anthocyanin. The sweet corn has different types of vitamins, uh, for example, vitamin A, D, E, and K, has also minerals, like magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium, carotenoids, flavonoids, like anthocyanin, and dietary fiber. 
this, uh, these all actually act against uh, type 2 diabetes and obesity, and also improve digestive health. Regarding anthocyanin, uh, it is uh, found uh, that anthocyanin is linked to uh, your cardiovascular health improvement, especially reducing high blood pressure. And some several research uh, conducted on mice found that uh, the tablet or powder from anthocyanin of purple corn uh, applied uh, on uh, against those cancers, colon, prostate, memory, liver, and kidney, and they actually have good impact on that. That means uh, this purple suit corn or anthocyanin has more health benefit for human agile. Now, why is not purple sweet corn common? The reason is actually, uh, there's two genes, uh, I, as I have said, here one. So this anthocyanin less gene, it actually not activated in the pathway, anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway. So there is no purple color, it's white or yellow. There is another gene, which is a uh, SH2, shankin 2 gene, in the starch biosynthesis pathway, sugar is not converted to starch because of this recessive shankin 2 gene. So uh, this uh, sweet corn is sweet. Uh, however, in starch maize, there is a dominant A1 gene. Uh, so it is uh, active in the biosynthesis pathway. So we easily get anthocyanin. However, it has uh, also the dominant acid to gene. Uh, that's why sugar is converted to starch and the kernels are round and starchy, not sweet. So to develop a uh, purple sweet corn, we need uh, the dominant A1 gene for, from the starch image. And also we need the recessive acid to gene from the sweet corn. But uh, it's not like straightforward. Otherwise, it, is, it would have been done before. Because uh, during meiosis, uh, we get one in four cells, but we need to break down the close genetic linkage between the A1 and SH2 gene to get purple sweet corn. And it's, uh, it can be uh, possible by, by breaking the linkage in one in 1,000 plants, not one in four. So it's very difficult to do the field. There are some early and late biosynthesis genes in the anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway. Uh, the early biosynthesis gene, for example, PR1, it controls the purple color or red color of aluron. So dominant PR1 is responsible for purple color. The decisive one is for red color. And the late biosynthesis gene, A1, is responsible for anthocyanin formation. There are some uh, uh, transition factors which helps the expression of early and late biosynthesis genes. So the MOIP transition factors uh, help the early biosynthesis genes and BSLS uh, transition factor helps the late biosynthesis genes. In corn, there are different uh, uh, transition factor genes, but the most important MOIP transition factor gene is PL1. It's the purple plant one gene responsible for pigmentation in different tissue of the plant, including perica. And the important BSLS uh, transcription factor gene is B1, booster 1 gene. So it's responsible for pigmentation in the pericap tissue. The important thing is uh, to activate anthocyanin biosynthesis uh, structural gene A1, one gene from each of these two transcription factor gene families record. So we need both PL1 and B1 to activate the A1 structural gene to get the anthocyanin. Now, in the starch biosynthesis pathway, so you know uh, the corn and sperm, three fourths of the and uh, sperm is starch. Uh, there are different uh, genes uh, active, but six genes play vital role uh, for starch biosynthesis. Uh, among them, SH2, the Shankin 2 gene, it encodes ADP glucose pyrophosphorylase and jam. This ADP glucose pyrophosphorylase converts uh, uh, sugar, uh, sugar uh, or sucrose to starch. That's why we get uh, the round starch kernel. However, in shankin to sweet corn, uh, the SH2 shankin to gene has no activity. ADP glucose pyrophosphorylase has no activity. As a result, we get the shankin shrivel kernels. And that's why in the eating stage, they are round and sweet. 
Now, uh, to develop our sweet corn, we uh, need to know some other things as well. So the industry, the yellow sweet corn industry is mainly based on Shankintu gene because the sweetness of Shankintu is two times than the sugary one, another sweet corn, and eight times than the starch image. However, purple berry cap uh, Shankintu sweet corn is not developed experimentally or commercially till now. So what are the challenges? The challenges for development of purple sweet corn uh, are at first, linkage between A1 and SH2 gene. So if I uh, discuss on a little bit about linkage, so these two genes, A1 and SH2, are on the same chromosome, chromosome 3. That means uh, by Mendelian uh, segregation first law, it can't be go in the next generation uh, separately. So they stay together. Uh, this, uh, you can see in the purple maze, they are all dominant genes. And in the next generation, you will get the purple maize. And the sweet corn, they are all recessive genes. This A1 and SH2 recessive genes, they stay together. So there is no segregation possible. Uh, but to develop purple sweet corn, we need the dominant A1 uh, gene from purple maize and recessive SH2 gene from sweet corn. So we need to break down that close genetic linkage. And this genetic distance between these two genes, A1 and SH2, is only 0.1 centimeter. That means uh, it occurred in one in 1,000 plant, but we need to follow uh, some strategic plants uh, to complete it. And the physical distance between these two genes uh, is 140 kilobase pair of DNA. But the problem is we don't have any information regarding perica pigmented corn because these information are based on aluron pigmented research, which is very easy to do. But regarding perica pigmented corn, we don't know what's the genetic distance, we don't know what's the physical distance. So this is the main challenge. Another challenge is we also need the expression of structural gene A1 and also regulatory gene PL1 and P1 to get the anthocyanin biosynthesis. Now, but my first aim of this uh, uh, research is to develop purple perica super sweet, sweet corn. And the hypothesis is, so at first we need the breaking the tight genetic linkage between these two genes, A1 and SH2, in order to develop a homozygous line of purple sweet corn. The second uh, aim is uh, uh, we need to check whether uh, the A1 and PL1 and, and beyond genes are present in my developed line. And the hypothesis is, as those genes are active in the purple maize parent, so it should, they should be present in the developed purple suit corn line. The third aim is to characterize the anthocyanin profile. So my third hypothesis is, as the purple uh, maize uh, has anthocyanin, and the developed purple suit corn should have anthocyanin, so the amount should be more or less similar. The fourth aim is uh, to characterize uh, the sugar profile. Uh, in this case, the same thing, no, the developed upper sweet corn line should have the similar amount of sugar like the white sweet corn parent. So these are the four aims and hypothesis. Now, uh, we have some strategic plans uh, by which uh, it's possible to develop uh, the purple sugar sweet corn. So the first one I watch uh, to cross between two parents, the parent one, which is uh, the purple round seeds, and the uh, parent two has uh, the white shrunk into seeds. And the uh, second uh, plan is to generate F2 plants. So the F1 plants uh, produced from the first cross all are purple round seeds because of one set of dominant A1 and SH2 genes. But in the F2, they will uh, segregate as like Mendelian ratio, T is to one. So 75% uh, round and 25% shrunken. So we need this all shrunken seeds. Then uh, this is the third plan um, by which our initial purple sweet corn line will be developed. So, but all as all are the recessive genes, they produce green plants, that means white sweet corn. But if there is any linkage break, then we will get 
uh, some purple silicon. The fourth generation uh, will then collect those uh, uh, shunken purple seeds and plant them out in the field. And then again, we'll get three to one, say 300 purple plants and 100 white, 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 white cups. So I'll discard uh, those white cups or green plants. And then to develop the homogeneous line of purple seed cone, uh, I'll just put the purple seeds and we'll get homogeneous fixed purple seed cone line. So these are the strategic plans we have followed to develop purple seed cone in the field. So uh, the field, uh, field work is also uh, followed by pollination. This is by hand pollination because we need uh, uh, the controlled cell pollination. So uh, that is followed by bagging and tagging uh, to avoid unwanted uh, pollen or foreign pollen. And then uh, I also have done some phenotyping. The phenotyping uh, is uh, just based on the purple color development and the shrunken appearance. Here you can see the photos. Uh, I have covered the ear uh, and also the pollens and then uh, pollinated them, bagged them, so we can get a pure line. So this is the first cross. Uh, I used uh, the purple uh, starchy maize seeds. So all the genes are dominant. And then uh, the white sweet cone genes, all the genes are recessive. Then I got uh, heterogeneous form of purple starchy maize in the F1 generation because of the dominant one set of dominant gene. So in the next field experiment, uh, we need to actually uh, uh, select two copies of shankin to gene to get the sweetness. So I have collected all the seeds from the cob and then planted them out in the field. And then we got 75% round uh, starchy kernel. You can see in the cob, there are three to one and 25% shankin kernel, shankin purple kernel. So the ratio is three is two, one. If you know Mendel's first law, law of segregation, and the after generation, the dominant and recessive uh, uh, nest is uh, T is to one. So 75% is purple uh, round and 25% is purple shunken. So I have discarded all the purple round kernels and just uh, collected all the purple shunken kernels. But uh, all of the maximum of the purple shunken kernels uh, should have only the recessive genes, so they will produce actually green plants, that means white crops. But if there is any link is back, then we can get uh, some purple seed corn. So in this time, time uh, I have just uh, selected all the shrunk into seeds, so the seed corn genes is now fixed. But in the next generation, maximum of them will produce green plant. You can see uh, some of the seeds. Uh, I have planted out more than 6,000 uh, seeds in the uh, field, and all of them actually produce the uh, white sweet corn because of low frequency of linkage back. But only five purple uh, plants produced uh, purple sweet corn because of linkage back. So it's only 0.1%, one in 1,000, but not only 1,000. In my case, I found five from six, more than 6,000 plants. That means one in 1,225 plants. Uh, by this uh, uh, work, uh, I have confirmed the first hypothesis that breaking the tight genetic linkage of this uh, one and S three genes is recorded, and it is observed in the field. And we have successfully developed the heterogeneous line of purple switch cone. Now, this is uh, the heterogeneous purple switch cone line having one copy of dominant A1 and one copy of recessive A1 gene, but uh, the shrunk into genes are now fixed. So we need to fix the dominant A1 gene. We need both copies of dominant A1 gene. So this is the eating stage at the left uh, uh, sweet corn. And at the mature stage, they are shrunken. So I have collected all the seeds and planted them out in the field. And we got 75% purple plant or purple crop of which 25% should have uh, dominant A1, both copies of genes, and also the resistance control. And 50% will again have the uh, from 
and 25% of those uh, green plants that is white crop, I have again discarded them and planted them uh, those purple shanken seeds. So some lines, some <coughs> say for example 100 plants that produce all purple plants. That means the A1 gene is fixed. In other plants there were some mix mixed, so those are not fixed. So that's what, uh, how we have selected the purple only the switch con line. So in the field, uh, in the third field experiment, there are seven more than 6,000 plants, but only five were purple. But in the fifth field experiment, uh, we, we, we got all purple plants. So now we can produce billions of purple seed corn. So these are the five purple seed corn lines. I have named them as team one, team two, team three, team four, and team five. However, one sweet corn line, team three, uh, it was affected by Fujarium fungus, so I have discarded this. So we now have team one, two, four, and five, four purple sweet corn lines, and uh, they are very much uh, available for next and planting and production. Now uh, I need to check my second hypothesis. So this aim was to check A1, PL1, and B1 markers. So I have done SSR marker study. Uh, I used a purple maize parent. Uh, the variety name is Costa Rica. So you can see uh, C as Costa Rica. And also I use quite sweet corn. The variety name is Nogam as in the gel. And I used the homogeneous purple sweet corn line, team one. So T in the gel. What I found by SSR studies that uh, the purple maize and team one line uh, both has uh, the dominant A1, PL1, and B1 genes. You can see in the, see in the GL gel, the these two are for A1 genes. So for Costa Rica and team one, they have more or less similar band size. Regarding PL1 gene, this uh, Costa Rica, the purple maize parent, and this T1, the developed purple silicon line has more or less similar uh, band. Uh, in T1, there may be more number of amplicon, but in the same position. Regarding B1 gene, uh, the T1 and uh, Costa Rica has same. So these three genes are present, both in purple maize parent and T1 in dominant form. But regarding white sweet corn, uh, normally, you, you see this A1 gene, the primer of the A1 gene, it's amplified a bit different position. So there are some differences. Regarding this PL1 gene, this is, there is some slight difference as well. But regarding B1 gene, there may be, uh, these all looks like similar. So one copy of the dominant B1 gene may be present in the wire skill content, but it actually doesn't uh, affect the phenotype because one copy, copy of uh, transmission factor cannot produce or plant. However, there may be some nucleotide, uh, single nucleotide polymorphism regarding those uh, genes. So we need further genomic study. And I'm ha happy to say that I'm doing that genomic uh, research as well. So the second hypothesis, dominant A1, PL1, and B1 genes are recurred for the development of purple silicon is now confirmed by my study. Next, I have done uh, some biochemical research, anthocyanin and sugar profiling. So anthocyanin, uh, at first uh, I uh, selected purple um, starchy maize, uh, shanken sweet corn, and purple allure maize to know the amount of uh, anthocyanin. So you can see the purple allure maize, there is very uh, less intense color because this is not uh, actually, a big, uh, single layer cell, uh, but the purple may, uh, maize has more intense color because there are four or more number of cells in the pelica. That's why the pelica pigmented cone is very much important. So, what I found is that the purple maize parent has 197 milligram per 100 gram fresh weight of anthocyanin. In contrast, the white sweet corn has no anthocyanin. 
And the purple alone mage has 28 milligram per 100 gram fresh rate of anthocyanin. That means more than seven times less than the uh, purple peri cup mage. So peri cup mage is that's why very much important. Now I have also done uh, anthocyanin quantification at eating stage. Previously, those were the mature kernels, but now I have taken the eating stage kernels, which is 25 day after pollination. So the purple maize plant, it produced 260 milligram per 100 gram fresh rate of anthocyanin. And my developed lines, team one to team five, they produced more or less similar amount of anthocyanin. If I uh, compare this result with other purple uh, fruits, red plum produced 30 milligram per 100 gram fresh fat of anthocyanin, dark strawberry has 60 milligram, and blueberry has actually uh, the range of 130 to 380 milligram per 100 gram fresh fat of anthocyanin. So my developed line has actually mentionable amount of anthocyanin, which are good for our health as well. So the third hypothesis is also confirmed that uh, the developed purple sweet corn line should have a similar amount of uh, anthocyanin as like the purple maize plant. Now, uh, there are some interesting uh, photos of um, the anthocyanin uh, development or the physiology of anthocyanin development. So anthocyanin development starts at 10 DAP, day after pollination, and it increased with the day of uh, uh, pollination. So, and spread throughout the kernels. At 21 days, you can, it's the eating stage or, or milk stage, so you can consume them. Uh, normally, the sweet corn eating stage is 21 to 25 day after pollination. But in my purple sweet corn line, developed lines, they are uh, from 21 to 28 day after pollination. So you can even consume them at 28 day after pollination. So more, more days. It's good for our uh, uh, point of view as well. And interesting thing is anthocyanin pigment can continue to increase during and after harvest. Even if you uh, preserve them in the freeze, then you can get more anthocyanin as well. But the amount of sugar will decrease a little bit. So now uh, another biochemical study, sugar profiling. I used the eating stage, male stage kernels. Uh, so the purple mage has a very less amount, 42 milligram per gram sugar. So sugar is composed of like fructose, glucose, and sucrose all together form sugar. Uh, white sweet corn produced 134 uh, milligram per gram sugar. And my developed line, team one, two, four, and five, they have more or less uh, similar, a bit more, a bit less, but more or less similar, not much difference. So the fourth hypothesis is now also confirmed that the developed purple sweet corn lines will produce same or similar amount of sugar in comparison to the white sweet corn plant. Now, in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, I'm very much happy that we have uh, broken down the tight genetic linkage between the A1 and S2 genes for the first time in the purple pericap super sweet sweet corn. So, it's a good news. And I have found the A1, PL, and B1 genes are also expressed uh, in the purple uh, sweet corn uh, lines as like this purple maize parent. Also, the anthocyanin amount is more or less similar in the developed purple sweet corn line, like it's purple maize parent. And the sweetness is also similar, like the white sweet corn parent. And this purple sweet corn has a potential health benefit to yellow sweet corn. I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, to show my gratitude to my respected PhD advisors uh, uh, for their guidance uh, throughout my PhD research work. And I'd like to acknowledge Hot Innovation Australia for project funding as Naturally Nutritious Project. Also, EQ Graduate School have provided me with uh, scholarship funding. I have, uh, I'm very much happy that uh, Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, NETON, has provided me with fieldwork facilities, uh, health and food sense precincts for biochemical work, 
Professor Nina Mitter's lab for molecular work, Professor Howard Henry's lab for genomics work, uh, Center for Nutrition and Food Sciences, Dr. Hung Hong and Dr. Neil Muni Jayanath, and my peers and fellow colleagues. Now I would like to dedicate uh, this uh, research work to the victims, frontline workers, and researchers of COVID-19 diseases. I wish the IP and formula for producing vaccine for COVID-19 will be open for all so that and country can produce vaccine to treat coronavirus. Because I believe any discovery depends on previous researchers' knowledge. For example, to complete my this applied research, I used the previous knowledge of Mendelism, linkage, transcription factors of molecular work, and genomic work. So if uh, uh, this uh, research is actually based on those previous knowledges, then we should have much contribution to our society. And thank you all. Well, thanks, thanks, Bubo. Uh, thanks very much for that. That was that uh, took me back to uh, the last couple of years in the field. Uh, one of the things um, that a Perbo did was that he just brushed through that um, the different steps, but each uh, each step was a season of of corn, and we were on the edge of our seats, kind of hoping and praying that the theory would work and that. Um, purple corn would appear at the other end and uh, it all worked out for the best, which was really great to see. So um, if you can put your questions into the Q&A, um, the first question uh, I'll put to you, Perbo. Um, this is from Ari. Uh, how bioavailable is anthocyanin in the, in the, the TIMS uh, uh, lines that you developed? Sorry, uh, sorry, I couldn't get the question. How how bioavailable is the anthocyanin in the uh, the the Tim lines that you develop, the sweet corn lines? Yeah, actually, um, uh, if you talk about the bioavailability, so uh, what I uh, need to say at first, this is uh, actually a naturally nutritious project, and I have developed this uh, purple sweet corn. Uh, naturally in the field. So we have not uh, followed any genetic, uh, say like CRISPR cas so gen genetic uh, uh, modification. It's not a GMO, so it's actually very much bioavailable and you can consume it very easily. It has a nice test as well. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, the taste is obviously important, but um, with with the bioavailability, I'd just like to add that normally normally anthocyanin is absorbed in the um, large intestine further further down, and has a, a big impact on gut microbiota, and they have a big impact on on health as well. So it's something that uh, we still need to look at uh, the the bioavailability. It's definitely a water soluble uh, nutrient. You notice that when you're eating it, don't you, Perbo? You get uh, stained fingers sometimes if you're not careful. Um, the next question, um, again from Mary, do we know if the colour profile associates with disease susceptibility in sweet corn? So no, um, uh, actually um, uh, in, when I worked in the field, uh, there was also several thousand sweet corn, white sweet corn. So they also sometimes uh, affected uh, by uh, some fungus or something like this. But regarding this uh, shrunk into sweet corn specifically, because there are also other types of sweet corn, they easily can get affected by fujarium or fungus. But this one is actually a bit different. So uh, then when I produced actually the purple sweet corn lines, there are so many plants in the field, but I have seen very, very limited uh, fungus or something like this. So they are very much good and the dimension rate, rate is also good. So this is pretty much uh, promising. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah, I can, I can vouch for that too. The, um, 
in the, some of the previous purple sweet corn that we did based on a different super sweet mutation called brittle, uh, the fusarium susceptibility seemed to come from the, the purple maize, the Peruvian purple maize it seems to be an inherent thing. So we've had to battle uh, against that just through selection mainly. And uh, with the shrunken too, it seems to have um, worked quite well uh, at, at reducing that incidence. Um, okay. Do you see, this is from, from Kitakan. Uh, do you see any linkage of this purple corn with any disease susceptibilities and what will be the next step of use of these purple lines? So you answered the first part, I think. So what, what's the next step of the, these purple sweet corn lines? Yeah, okay. If uh, the question is about uh, um, reducing digits, then, well, we, we, we say the previous study said the anthocyanin is uh, linked to increasing your cardiovascular health and decreasing cancers and other types of disease. Uh, and if we uh, like, would like to know what's the future, then certainly we say uh, the purple sweet corn will be available in the Australian and maybe in the global market very soon. So it's good that we have done something novel based on the previous research and we need to know the community and the society and let them get the benefit out of our research. I think so, and the visual, the visual differentiation too is something uh, really different, um, and that we 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 have shown in consumer focus groups that uh, there is quite a lot of interest in in purple sweet corn, so that's um, that's promising. It's terrible when you do do all these sort of things, and then everyone says, "No, that's I don't like it." <laughs> anyway, it's good to know early <laughs> if that happens, but it wasn't in this case. Um, so from Daniel, uh, what's the yield comparison between yellow and purple corn? So uh, yellow and purple corn yield, though we have not done uh, that comparison, but from my experience in the field working uh, for more than two and a half years uh, and uh, five or more six uh, field planting. So as you know, this uh, purple sweet corn is also sweet corn but it also has uh, the anthocyanin dominant anthocyanin gene. So the yield is uh, more or less similar what I have seen in the field. So say if you consider per hectare yield or something like this, so more or less similar. I think it's also important to say that with sweet corn, you, it, it's the cob uh, which is important rather than the amount of grain in, yeah. in comparison to maize. So, one plant, the plants are uh, planted at, at, at the same uh, density as normal sweet corn and you um, in most cases get one, one uh, commercial cob per plant. So it's, it's very similar. Right. Sure. Uh, okay, and the last question I have here is, what was the rationale for doing all the experiments in the field? Yeah, that's actually a great question, I think. Uh, because, you know, uh, people are now very much conscious about their health and, and also uh, their GMO, genetically modified organisms are available. There are several, several types of GMO force, uh, but in some cases we don't know what's the actually consequences of the, those GMOs. Sometimes they are good, sometimes not good, so need more time to understand. But regarding this, uh, what I have done in the field, so this is based on the basic knowledge, basic research of previous work, say for example, linkage and the separate, um, uh, breaking down the closed genetic linkage. So it actually some, uh, happened in the uh, uh, field or natural, um, not naturally. But in this case, we need to actually follow some strategic plans because uh, we need to actually select those characters for shunken and sweetness but it's the same mechanism uh, that is operated in the nature. So in this case, uh, doing this research in the field is for, from the consumer point of view, it's naturally nutritious. So you may need not to be worried about something like GMO. So it's, I, th I think that's the main reason uh, for working in the field with this development. And, and once again, if I can add to that, um, 
the the final one of the final experiments that um, a Perbo conducted required about six thousand plants. So that's a, another good reason for having it in the field because that certainly would take up a lot of glasshouse space, and we all know yeah. how much glasshouse space costs. <laughs> yeah, right. for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, th thanks everyone uh, for today. That's the last of the questions. I'd just uh, like to say a couple of things before we go. Um, firstly, the next Quaffy seminar uh, is by Dr. Katie O'Connor from, from DAF up at Marucci Research Station. And she'll be breeding for better horticultural varieties quicker. And my guess is that strawberries, which is uh, very yummy. So uh, look forward to that, everybody. Uh, that's coming up on 1st of June. So if you uh, want to, if you enjoyed the seminars and you'd like to sign up for Quaffy seminars and be on the uh, post out and the email email list, uh, please visit the the Quaffy website, the seminar page, and uh, or you can. I think uh, can we do we have another slide there with the little and you can click on or you can click on the um, the linkage with your smartphone. That's right, and that'll take you to it as well. So thank you very much, uh, everyone. Um, thank you for coming today.